most of the ingredients we use in baking have a very high water content. This high water content influences the texture and the taste, the appearance or even the susceptibility to spoilage of some foods. That is why it is important to know the amount of water or the dry extract of our ingredients and preparations. The dry extract is all the elements, whether solid or liquid, that are not water. Here we have different examples of ingredients with varied dry extract content. For example, fruits range from 75% of water, as is the case with bananas, up to 95%, as is the case with watermelon. Here we have, for example, apricots that have 86% of water, which is equivalent to 14% of dry extract. On the other hand, nuts are considered to have a dry extract from 50%, like chestnuts. Here we also have some hazelnuts that have 95% of dry extract. Then we also have ingredients like butter, which, although it may not seem like it, has a water content of 15%. At the other extreme, we have oil, with 100% of dry extract. And in the middle, we have egg yolks, with 50% of water. Controlling water in recipes is essential for controlling their stability. Within the recipes, we find water in two different forms. In the form of free water or as controlled water. Free water is that which can be easily separated or removed from the ingredients, as it happens in orange juice or in water that separates from a fresh cheese. This free water is available for the growth of microorganisms, so it shortens the shelf life of our products. Plus, it can move freely through the recipe, so it can migrate from wet to dry areas. For example, if we have a sponge cake and a compote, the free water from the compote will end up migrating towards the sponge. On the other hand, controlled water is divided into bound water and entrapped water. Bound water is that which is interacting or forming bonds with other polar molecules, like sugar or proteins. Sometimes it is also called hydration water. Entrapped water, on the other hand, is that which is physically retained within a three-dimensional net of macromolecules as in pectin gels, or with the egg proteins in a meringue. Neither entrapped water nor bound water can act as solvent, nor are they available for the growth of microorganisms. Either because it is forming other bonds with other molecules, as in the case of bound water, or because it is physically separated from the ingredients, such as entrapped water. In addition, this type of water has a much lower mobility, so we have it more under control. To prevent the negative effects of water mobility, such as cineresis, we need to control very well the free water in our recipes. For this reason, we normally use bulking agents, such as sugars or starches, that can control this free water that we have in a recipe. The most important parameter that we have to take into account when formulating a recipe is the ratio between dry extract and free water in our preparation. <laughs>